Now that we've got a slab or the shape of our building, we could do this next part in multiple stages. Now we've got the basement, and a basement structure will normally be made out of the slab. Now we could have beams underneath that. We'll also have walls which will go around the outside and we'll probably have columns as well. Now there's so many questions that we could ask or would need to ask that it can be difficult to know what to do first. One of the questions is well how thick is the wall? And if we go into the composites we can see that there are already some different options available to us but none of them may be necessarily appropriate for the type of construction that we'd need to use. What is that basement wall going to be built of? It's probably, in this case, going to be built out of a reinforced, core-filled, concrete block wall. So how big is that? That's, in terms of a structure, we could call it concrete, we could call it concrete block, and it's 190, they call it a 200 block, 200 series, it's actually 190, but of course we could be adding additional thickness to that because we might be adding um, waterproofing on the outside and um, protection boards, insulation, we could of course be adding internal lining as well. So how do we know what to do? We sort of don't and therefore we have to allow that it's potentially going to change. Now when we do the basement wall, are we building that basement wall inside or outside of that boundary offset. Well, again, there's a lot of different possibilities and why we do one or the other. I'm going to do it inside for now. And when I'm drawing, I'm going to use the outside face as the reference line. What does that mean? When we zoom right in, we can see that the outside line in this case, or the left-hand side, is thicker than the inside wall. When we're drawing in ARCHICAD, generally, we should be drawing in an anti-clockwise direction. So I'm going to do this with the polygonal method to explain how this works. Click, that's one wall, click to start the next one, click to finish the next one. Start, zoom out, zoom in, finish, click to start, zoom out, zoom in. Some people would um, scroll or pan from side to side, I prefer to go in and out. Now that's one way, of course, we could use the magic wand. Let's undo that, pick up the settings. Get rid of those walls. And then we could magic wand. And because we already drew the slab, we could automatically describe the walls to the slab by using the magic wand. Or, of course, we could have used the different methods of drawing. We could have used the trapezoidal method, or the polygonal method, or of course if we wanted to do a curved wall, we could use the curved wall tool. And if we're doing a curved wall, we could do that in a few different ways. We could do that defined by the center. So how big is it in radius? Maybe it's six meter radius. full circle or partial circle or maybe it is a an arc where we define that arc with three points a three point arc or a center point arc or of course center point circle so there's different methods that we could use if we wanted to draw walls even if it was a curved wall of course, we could also make a curved shape and then magic wand it using the wall tool as well. So there's multiple functions. I didn't really go into the settings of the wall much first. We see that this wall is as tall as the stories are high. So this is defined by linking from the basement to the ground floor. So we see that it's grayed out at 3 meters. Now, if we wanted to make it slightly shorter than 3 meters, we could say minus 200, and that would make that... 2800. So this is a really good tool built into ARCHICAD which is very useful when we maybe don't necessarily know how big our story heights are. A good reason for that is unless you have a very good understanding of the construction system that you're going to use and all of the structural depths and requirements, beam depth, slab depths, you might have a design intention but you don't know what construction structural reality that's necessarily going to have. So it's great that we can just say floor to floor or floor to floor minus a particular number or floor to floor plus a particular number and then once maybe we get some feedback, some preliminary design from a structural engineer, we could plug that into ARCHICAD and change 
the floor to floor heights by changing the height to next and that would automatically adjust all of our Archicad model to suit. So very, very functional tool. Now where are we up to with this? If we go into 3D we can see, show all in 3D, we have our, a wall which is now sitting on top of our slab. But of course we couldn't just get away with a perimeter wall. We'd also need to have columns or other elements to provide structure in our building. Now I'll use the column tool in this case. Let's make this into a, a circular column and we'll make it 400 millimeters diameter. We'll also make that structural concrete. We could make it precast. It doesn't really matter in terms of the building material at the moment. And again, we'll go floor to floor. For now, we can of course change that later if we want to. And we want to place the column based on the center point of where it sits. So for now, I'm just going to click this on the internal face. And then I'm going to move it across a set distance. What is that going to be? I'm going to make that six meters. Then I'm going to move this down six meters. And then I'm going to create a copy, mirror a copy. And I'm going to use the middle point to define that copy. And then I'm going to multiply this using this option at the end, multiply. Which option am I going to use? I'm going to use the drag option. I'm going to use the increment option. How many do I want? I'm just going to guess at the moment and say 10. I don't want to pick a path. I'm going to click and I'm going to decide how far apart I want these to be. So I'm going to say just for now, just to make it simple, six meters. Now I guessed that, but that's cool. It leaves the bay a little bit wider at the end. It doesn't matter for now. This is really just design experimentation and teaching you a bit of the Archicad tools. Now this means that six meter span is, is pretty achievable, particularly with steel or concrete construction. So that means if we had a beam running this way or running this way, it'd be very easy for our structures to be able to span across that. Now if we go back into 3D, show all in 3D, we can see that straight away we're achieving a building because we're creating one element, we're making sure that that single element is right and then we're multiplying it. So it all comes together very quickly when we use this sort of a method. So now we have wall, we have slab, we have columns. Of course I could group all those columns together. Right now would be the best time to do that. Choose the column tool, command A, edit, grouping, group, and now we could edit, move those, adjust those, select those all in one go. Now with the wall tool and the column tool, apart from being able to draw a curved wall, we could also slant that wall. So if we wanted it not to be vertical but on an angle, we could choose to do that too. And both ways, of course, And we could do the same thing with our columns. I think I type 90, <laughs> 70. And of course, if we didn't like that orientation, we could change them all or individually. It's interesting that they're mirrored because of course I mirrored them when I placed them. But of course, if I use this, I could change that angle as well. All right, and let's make those straight in because I don't want them to be slanted in this case for this project. So that's a, a very quick introduction to the wall tool, to the column tool. We see that the difference between a column and a wall particularly is that we place a column, it's a one-off element, whereas we stretch a wall, we draw a wall point A to point B in order to be able to draw it. We can group those together, we can group those together, we can group anything together that we want to mostly. And in the next video, we're going to have a look at how to then start to create some openings, maybe it's some doors or windows. Maybe we'll copy this up onto the next story to create a ground floor because we're not going to have too many opens in, in the basement anyway. And have a look at some other functions that we can create with Archicad.